Hello, friends. Welcome back to Parser Hacking. We're still working on the Ruby Parser. Uh, I've been working on it for a long time. I'm really ready to finish this up. And I think for that reason, this will be the last video in the series. I've just been head down trying to get all the tests to pass. We're down to 54 failures and 54 errors. Uh, I don't remember what the number was last time in the last video, but I know it was several hundred and uh, I've just been working on it for the last uh, several weeks and just trying to get these numbers down. It's been slow. It's been boring at times. It's not been fantastic, but uh, I'm excited to get it done because my, my goal is to integrate it back with Natalie, our Ruby compiler, so that we can dog food our own parser and uh, just own more of our own code. And uh, uh, that's going to be, that's what is really driving me here. I know... Um, I know a lot of people ask, well, why do you do it if it's not fun? Uh, it is fun. It's challenging. And I've learned a lot. Um, but there are times when it's when it's not as much fun. So I don't know. I hope that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, let's just find something here that we can that we can work on. Um, you know, right away, I'm seeing this one. Uh, I don't know that we handle the arg splat um, star star kind of syntax we could work on that. Why not? Um, it, I think this test is probably specifically about the nil, um, but part of the failure here, the syntax error, is that uh, I think we're not recognizing the star star. So let's just go see if that's the case. Uh, that is not the directory I want to be in, Natalie Parser. Uh, and let's go back to the master branch. I think everything is pulled. Cool. Uh, let's go to parser test, which is where we stick all kinds of goodies. And uh, let's see, splat. I know we have this. Oh, we do have keyword splat. Okay. Um, so what is happening? Expected end of block args. Okay. So let's just do this test exactly and see what happens. Expect parse must equal something and as usual we'll run rake watch here and let uh let us get the output from ruby parser that'll tell us exactly what we want uh that's fascinating i guess that's right i guess that's right because yeah it's just a little bit weird syntax and the, the way this happens but um yeah so let's just make this foo kind of for consistency and uh, let's copy this over. Liam. Uh, it was close. An attempt was made. I didn't change this, of course. Okay, so Ruby Parser is happy. Now, Natalie Parser is complaining because it said uh, expected end of block args. And so if we're lucky can go over to parser cpp and look for that error message and it's only in one place so that means we're in the right the, we're in the right place hopefully um so it looks like uh if the left hand side receiver for the block can't accept a block we're in good we're in good place uh we jump over the curly brace and then if it's uh two pipes you know side by side then that looks like kind of like an or uh, so that's not the case here. So we're in this branch. Uh, we're going to do parse iter args. And parse iter args returned without consuming the nil, is what I think is what that means. I think it returned right here. Uh, so let's just figure out why that is. Um, parse def single arg. So it looks like it didn't even parse a single arg. So why not? Um, oh, okay. So we're only looking for very specific token types. We're looking for a bare name or an, a left paren or multiply or an exponent, which is star, star, star. I really named some of the tokens, um, unfortunately. Uh, uh, not literal enough because I named them after their meaning of what I saw when I saw the token. And I should have named it very literally like this is just star or, or asterisk and star star or asterisk asterisk um but i didn't do that and i have always regretted it but um ap apparently you can pass a nil so i guess we will do a nil keyword here nil keyword and um, what is it that we want to return oh no that's not right so we're in this one 
Uh huh. Is bear name else arg? Oh, okay. That's actually the problem. Uh, so no, we don't want that. We can just get rid of that. Let's go back up here and say. Let's do this. We say if is keyword. We do something right here. Um, I think we want to do that same thing. We say else if token. Uh, I guess current token is keyword. Then it's going to be similar to this, and it's going to be type value because I want the literal, like what it is, nil in this case. Uh, why are you yelling though? Current token, new string, new string. I guess that returns a C string. Oh, gross. Okay, not real proud of that one. How does arg node work? Yeah, it takes a shared pointer to a string. Okay, this is fine. Uh, we want to advance over that token and we want to add it to the locals. Mm. Questionable. I don't think so. I think, I think not. Let's try it without that. Let's see if we can get our test passing this way. Well, that seemed to work. Uh, that wasn't too bad, but uh, makes me wonder now if we also have to do it for a single asterisk and just nil by itself. So what do these produce? Uh, Natalie Parser, Ruby Parser says, unexpected error value nil. So we're in good company here. This one should produce a syntax error. Um, I'll just do this. Raise syntax error. Uh, the next one I presume will not. Uh, parse error on value nil. Okay, so both of those <laughs> produce syntax errors. So we're in good company. We're doing the right thing. Uh, raise syntax error. Okay, cool. One test down. Uh huh. So we get to find out if um, in keyword args, if this gets that one test passing uh, over on our other branch where we're running the uh, the Ruby parser tests, see if it gets this one uh, passing, which is this right here. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh huh. So if I if I do it without rebasing, I can do Ruby test Ruby parser and it actually passed. What? 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 <laughs> Why? Wait, wait, wait! It shouldn't already be passing. Twelve hours ago. That's from this morning. This one was failing. This is on a different branch. I haven't, I haven't fixed that yet. Why? Okay, test. Gonna do it this way. Go up to it. Well, there it is. Fascinating. Okay. Um, what if we focus it this way? Okay, fails that way. Apparently, oh, yeah, I don't know what what was happening before. Um, but we're just gonna stash that. We're gonna get rebase master to pull over that change we made. Uh, do a we'll see get stash pop now we're focusing that test retest so hopefully it'll it'll pass now it does cool uh huh so let's uh force push that uh and let's do one more for this video um 
since we're kind of on a roll here. Yeah, these these line numbers, I ugh, those those are not fun at all. Um, where it's just the line number that's different. Uh, begin semicolon. Uh, our friend Kevin Newton uh, did a blog post about these little shadow variables or um, block local. Uh, pr uh, lambda local variables here. I'm not ready to start parsing those. I've never seen those in the wild in all my years of programming Ruby. Um, oh, here's one. This one could be interesting. Here's an empty uh, begin end block, and for some reason we're returning a nil. Uh, so let's see if we can we can figure out what's going on there. Uh huh. Oh, is that it? Wait, what? That's not what it looked like to me. Yeah, I guess that is it. So if I if I do this, parser test, we'll go back to our master branch. Um, dot dot. Where do we do that? Ranges. Yes. Expect parse must equal oops right rake watch give me a failing test cool copy this boom, 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 boom. and now we get to figure out why uh why we return a nil for the left side and a nil for the right side, but Ruby parser returns a begin. Whoa. I feel like mine is better. I feel like my result's better, but it really depends on what Ruby does. So if I have um, a range that's uh, empty parens dot dot nil, uh, what? It's a beginless range. It's an endless range. Um, cool. It's a beginless and an endless range. Okay. So if I have nil dot dot nil, is that also the same thing. Uh, oh, r2 dot begin, two dot end, r2 dot first, r2 dot last. Literally the same. Why? 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 Why does Ruby parser return a begin here? Um, I don't see a functional difference between us returning a nil for that. And and what Ruby gives you, um, because this, and let's see, uh, let's do it this way. So if we have an array of ranges, the first one is this, nil. The next one is nil, nil. The next one is nil dot dot parens. And the last one is that. Shouldn't those all be the same? A... Um, zero, uh, let's see, zero equals equals a one, two, three. Uh, I guess that's all of them. Um, they're all equal. Yeah, I don't think we care. That's an easy win. I am just going to leave this off and, uh, let's just unstage all that, load that, go back to our branch. Um, we're we're just gonna do this this way. Break test uh, test bug one seventy nine focus. Let's just make sure that oops. Hmm. There we go. Break test. Sometimes this happens. Yeah, it's passing now. Uh. Yes, no. I'm just going to make a commit, say, um, 
we return nil for uh, and that is functionally equivalent. So I just modified the test to match what we do. Uh, I feel good about that. So, uh, question is, how many uh, passing tests are we down to, or, or failing tests are we down to? 53 and 52. And we started out with, um, what was it? 54, 54, I think. 54, 54. Yeah, both numbers went down. I call that a win. That's awesome. Uh, that's it for this video. Yeah. Uh, if you didn't stick around this, long, if you did stick around this long, congratulations. That's uh, that's some dedication. Um, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't think anyone should feel bad if they didn't. Uh, this is definitely not sexy in any way, shape, or form. Um, it's it's a little bit fun to find all the edge cases in parsing Ruby, but mostly it's just a slog and. Um, and that, that's something people ask me about a lot is, well, why do you do it? Why don't you do something fun? Why don't you make a startup and make money or whatever? Um, I don't know. I, I guess, I guess because it's one of those things that, um, I wasn't sure if I could do it. And, uh, I think that I've now proven that I can, so it's sort of like climbing that mountain. I can do it and I'm almost to the top. Um, even though I feel like I'm maybe like 90% of the way up the mountain and I, I know it's, I know I can get there. Um, unless I actually finish it, then I won't be able to check it off my list. So I don't know. It's probably a character flaw on my part, but I really want to get it done and I really want to get all these tests passing. Uh, the ones that matter, that is, um, like this one didn't matter. It was functionally equivalent. So we just changed the test and that's what a lot of it is. So, uh, 50% fixing the test, 50% just modifying the test a little bit. If it's just a line number that's slightly off, I, um, that's probably a matter of opinion. Uh, at least for me, it feels like it is. Um, but yeah, uh, it's just getting to the top of that mountain. And, uh, I think well, I'm babbling now I'm rambling. So <laughs> if you, if you stuck around this long, thank you. Appreciate you. Uh, I hope to see you in another video and we're going to get back to compiler videos. Eventually we're, I'm going to finish this up. We're going to do some compiler videos. Hope to see you then. Bye.